Welcome back to Meds Made Easy. My name is Tarun. and today we're going to be talking about Resedronate, also known as Actinel. It is used for osteoporosis of all different various kinds, uh, having to do with aging, having to do with uh, like gluco glucosteroid, uh, osteoporosis, and essentially the way it works is that as you get older, unfortunately, it's, a, it's kind of a natural process of aging, your body starts to disintegrate your bones in order to uh, flush your body with calcium, um, which is why whenever you get a lot older, especially women, your doctor will put you on calcium supplements because that's sort of the first step of preventing osteoporosis. But at some point, you, you know, not everyone's able to kind of prevent it by, you know, milk or calcium supplements or what have you, and you have to start taking this medication. What that does is it blocks your body from breaking down your bones. That's why whenever you get older, everyone starts to look more frail. The bones are not as thick as they used to be, which is why, and also why they get brittle, which is why you have a lot of uh, older people that will break a hip or something if they fall. It's because their bones are getting weaker and weaker because the body's breaking it down for calcium. It seems like a really weird process for your body to do because your body is a self-healing thing, a mechanism, but in terms of aging, things kind of go out the door. So that's kind of how it works. Um, you, you do have to take it a specific way. You do have to take it 30 minutes before breakfast or before you eat anything with a glass of water, no, no carbonated sodas or anything like that, just plain glass of water and you have to stay upright for 30 minutes. Um, and there's, there's, you know, there's just, that's just kind of the best way to do it. If you're laying down and it messes up the whole mechanism of how it's absorbed and it gets into your bottom bloodstream. So watch out for things like that. Um, it generally peaks in one to one to three hours, but this thing stays in your system for a very long time, which is why you're taking this, uh, you know, very, very infrequently. You're not, this is not a one a day thing, right? Um, and so that, that's kind of the thing to watch out for is you're only really taking it when your doctor directs you to take it. I've seen this thing, I've seen this taken once a month and I've taken it and I've seen people take it once a week. It really depends on your indication. Um, so you kind of have to watch the doctor. Now, in addition to everything, you should be on calcium and vitamin D supplements while you're on this. Now, unless your doctor says otherwise, but generally that's what we see in like 80, 90% of the population that are on this medication. So we're talking about 1,000 milligrams for men between 50 and 70 years old. Uh, for women, it's always a little bit higher. Uh, so 1,200 milligrams for women over 51 or men over 71. So those are the things to watch out for. For vitamin D, it's anywhere from 800 units to 1,000 units daily um, for men and women, regardless of age. And the reason for that is, is calcium is, it's not easily absorbed by your body, so you need vitamin D. That, that vitamin helps your body process the calcium so it can get absorbed. The other big thing is, whenever you do take calcium, you cannot take the 1,000 milligrams or the 1,200 milligrams in one dose. Can't do it, your body won't process it. Your body can only process and digest up to 600 milligrams per serving or per dose. So that's why when I tell my patients, I tell them to take the calcium supplement in the morning and in the evening. And trying to take it with a meal kind of helps absorb it because there might be some vitamin D that you're eating in your food and that kind of helps absorb it all. Um, and then, but the, the vitamin D, you only really take that once a day unless you want to take 400 milligrams in the morning, evening, uh, or 500 in the morning, in the evening with the calcium supplement that helps really digest it all down. Um, so those are the little tricks of the trade that I've kind of found that I tell my patients. Um, if you do have renal issues, you do have to watch the um, dosing of this medication and does it interact with other medications your doctor should know. Hepatic, not really, you don't really see an adjustment on this one. Um, I'm gonna put up a list of side effects here. The big things you wanna watch out for are things like it can cause a, a spike in your blood pressure, hypertension, um, it can cause headaches, skin rashes, um, any sort of GI upset, constipation, diarrhea, cramping, um, and then at the same time, if you're starting to feel fatigued, kind of worn out, um, then that's a sign you need to call your doctor, let them know, so they'll switch you on to something else. So I guess that does it, guys. Like I said, I like to keep these videos very, very short and get you what you need. Hit subscribe, let us know how we're doing, and we'll see you next time on Meds Made Easy.